Welcome to Jenna's Cozy Corner. Welcome to Jenna's Cozy Corner. <laughs> what a song. What a song we just made. Hello, Mr. Walt. Hello, Mr. Walt. My Walty Walty boy. Are you the bestest boy? No, you're not. Because you bark at every living thing. Honestly, just everything. It doesn't even need to be living. And you will bark at it. Yep. And you pee on the floor, but then you do this. And it's just all better. <laughs> hey friends, it is Jenna What Is Up and welcome back to the Board Game Garden and welcome to the monthly wrap up for May. So this is going to be all of my board game stats for May, all of the games that I played multiplayer in May. And then on, I think it's Saturday of this week, I will have my games I enjoyed solo in May. So if you guys wanna see all of that, then just keep on watching. I also have a dog on my lap that wants to leave. Um, are you gonna say goodbye? See you later, everybody. Ah. He's like, I am uncomfortable. Okay, goodbye. No barking, please. And no chewing cords, please. Or board games. Anyways, if you guys wanna see all the games that we played in May, then just keep on watching. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy. Also hit that subscribe button if you've yet to do so. We'd love to have you here in the garden and comment down below all the games or some of your favorite games that you played in May. I would love to know. And yeah, let's get into this video, shall we? All right, so immediately when we get into the board game stats for May, I just wanna say that May was not as good as April. I had to think what was before May. But April was like my best board gaming month. And then May didn't prove to be as amazing as April, which is totally fine. There's going to be months where I can play more and months when I can't play more. So for May, I played a total of 36 times. That is not including BGA or anything. This is 36 individual um, like physical playthroughs um, and 28 different games and then as for new to me games, I played 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Almost 20 of those games were new to me. So in these past few months, I've been playing a ton of new games and it's making me so, so, so happy. Um, but I do wanna say that I would love to get back to playing some of the games that I know and love and just get some multiple plays of some games that I know I love and have in the collection and stuff like that. So um, within the next few months, hopefully I will be able to get some more plays of games that are not new to me. But obviously, as you guys can see by this shelf back here, which is my shelf of opportunity, we need to get new games played as well. So there's always this balance when doing like board game content creation where you kind of have to try to balance playing older games that you know and love, but then also getting newer games to the table and experiencing those so that you can cover them on your channel. So yes, um, that is everything for the board game stats. I actually, shoot, I didn't count how many plays I had on BGA. Please hold. All right, so after going on BGA and counting up all of my plays for May, I had 28 plays and I played games such as Sea Salt and Paper, Stone Age, Boomerang Australia, Carnegie, which I went into that game not really knowing how to play it, but I kind of learned as I went and really enjoyed it. I do want to learn, because I like technically didn't learn how to play Carnegie, I kind of just learned as I went, um, but I would love to actually learn that game properly and then play a physical game of it, because I enjoyed how I played. Um, I will say that I got less than half of the score of Gabriella, which shout out to Gabriella, she's one of the Board Game Garden community members. Um, I played with her and she got more than double my score. So she knew what she was doing. I did not. Um, but I also played Lost Runes of Arnak, Caper Europe, Acropolis, which I didn't love. I would love to play that one physically. Um, I think I mentioned last month that I played that and didn't love it. Um, Copenhagen, Wingspan, Arc Nova, um, Hadara, which I kind of played not knowing what I was doing, but enjoyed that one. Um, Lost Seas, Res Arcana, I've been playing a lot of Res Arcana, which I've been really enjoying. Castles of Burgundy, Stone Age, more Res Arcana, Dog Lover, Seven Wonders, Earth, Castles of Burgundy, Feast for Odin, um, or a Feast for Odin, more Arc Nova, more Arc Nova. And then I also played a game called Nanga Parbat, which is actually on 
my shelf of opportunity up here. It is from Dr. Finn's Games, and I'm really, really excited to play that one physically because I enjoyed it very, very much on BGA. So that is everything for my BGA plays. I did 28 in the month of May. And without further ado, let's get into all of the plays and I'll tell you guys how all of those went and how I felt about them. All right, so moving into some physical plays for May, which I will say that I played a lot solo in the month of May. Um, I typically play slightly more multiplayer than I do solo, but I think they might have been like almost the same this month. So um, on May 2nd, I did play a solo game that I will chat about in the next video. And then on May 4th, which was like Star Wars Day. I think that's what it's technically called. May the 4th be with you. Um, that day I went over to my friend Tyler's house and Tyler, Aiden and myself, we played Moonrakers, which Moonrakers is a game that I've heard a ton about. A lot of people chat about it. Um, Ivy Games or Ivy Studios makes a lot of games that a lot of people seem to really enjoy and they do a really good job at making their games really good looking. Like the aesthetic of all the Ivy Studios games um, are very, very nice and I like them. But Moonrakers was a game that I was always scared of because it had negotiation as a main mechanic, which I've always been scared of negotiation. I don't know what it is. I thought that negotiation was like connected to like conflict and having to like, I don't even know. I don't know why I thought it was a bad thing, but negotiation is not bad. You're basically just being like, hey, I have this thing to complete can someone help me? If you do help me with this, then I will give you something in return. Um, so it's definitely not bad. And I actually really, really enjoyed Moonrakers. Um, basically, you are trying to complete these different quests that require um, certain like icons and stuff, and you're using your cards um, in order to play those icons down. Um, you also have cards that allow you to play actions. It's a little bit confusing to explain, but I really enjoyed it and for some reason me holding off playing this game for so long and then me actually enjoying it, um, it, it made me enjoy it even more um, because of that, because I've held off on playing it for so long. So that was Moonrakers, which I also want to mention that I did try Fractured Sky on Tabletop Simulator. My friend Aiden, um, Steph and I, we got together and played Fractured Sky on a TTS. And again, I really enjoyed that one as well. It has a like hidden area majority or like, I guess it's not really betting. You're basically putting a number onto a different spot. And then um, once that round is over, everyone flips over their chips on that specific spot. And then whoever has the most there, the area majority type thing, whoever has the most um, like gets control over that. No, they don't get control over it. They get like a little um, shard, like a star shard thing. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed that one. There's also a little bit of resource management and stuff like that and peeking, peeking at different cards. Um, I really enjoyed that one as well. The thing with Fractured Sky is that they really deluxified that game. And personally for me, I enjoyed the gameplay enough that like I don't think it needs the deluxification that it had, but I know that Ivy Studios, Ivy Games really loves to make their games look really, really nice and deluxify them. Um, so I know a lot of people really liked the deluxification for Fractured Sky, but personally for me, I would just be okay with getting the retail edition, which eventually I might get. I think my friend Aiden has decided that he was going to back for the retail edition of that. Um, and then also, I would love to have Moonrakers in my collection, but both Tyler and Aiden backed the big Titan campaign. So they both have the big box with all of the different expansions and stuff. So I don't really need it in my collection, but I would like to, to experience this solo, um, as well as maybe being able to play it with our friends Tom and Asha. I think they would enjoy it, as well as, you know, Francis and I's families. I think they would enjoy it as well. But yeah, I really enjoyed Moonrakers. I'm excited to play it more um, with all the different expansions and stuff. Um, but yes, that was May 4th. The following Friday, I actually went over to my friend Daryl's house and we played three different games. The first game that we played was a smaller game called High Society, which I've heard a lot of people talk about this one. It's been a game that has been around for a while and it is a betting game, I believe where there's a card flipped over in the middle that has a certain value on it. The higher the value, the better. Obviously, at the end of the game, whoever has the most is the winner. But I believe that whoever spends the most 
gets eliminated or something like that. So it's kind of similar to QE in that way. Um, I think QE probably got that um, little bit of a mechanism from um, high society, but you're playing out different amounts of money that you have in cards in order to win those cards and have them in front of you. There's some like negative cards that you don't want to win, stuff like that. Um, I enjoyed it. It wasn't like my favorite thing ever. Um, and then the next game that we played, I'm sorry to anyone that I'm going to offend right now, but we played a game called Steam Up, which is a feast for dim sum, which this is a game that I feel like a lot of people were super, super excited about. The components in this game are the cutest thing. I love the look of this game with the little dim sum trays and the little um, spinny thing. What is it called? Lazy Susan. Really, really enjoyed the way that it looked, but unfortunately I did not enjoy Steam Up very much. I don't know what it was. I did really bad. It's probably one thing that kind of contributes to me not liking it, but I just felt like you or I was trying to go for things. I was trying to go for specific little um, dim sum containers, but by the time it got back to me, someone else had taken it and then I had to start all over again and try to go for something else, but then again, it'd come back to me and someone else would have taken it. And it's just, it seems like you have no control over what's going on in the middle, so it's really, really hard to strategize and try to get these different things. I don't know, maybe I was doing it wrong. Maybe I was just not very good at the game. Basically on your turn, you are picking one of the actions and one of the actions is to get these little um, chips of the different ingredients that are going to be in the dim sum baskets. And you have to collect the certain ingredients in order to um, trade those in to take the dim sum basket that you have um, those chips of. So by the time I was able to collect the certain chips to get a certain basket, that basket was gone and then I had to like try to come up with the other chips to get another basket and then that one might have been taken. So yeah, like I said, I wish I enjoyed it because the theme of it and the look of it is adorable, but I just, I didn't like steam up at all. Um, so yes, that was the second game that we played. And then lastly, we played a game called Hamster Roll. Hamster Roll, it's a really, really old dexterity game where there's this big, huge circle and you are trying to place your pieces onto this circle and you're having to place it further and further to the left. So every single time you place one of your things on, the, the hamster roll kind of starts rolling and whatever pieces fall off when you place your piece, you get. And then whoever doesn't have any pieces first is the winner, whoever gets rid of all their pieces first. And I did win this one. I was really good at this one. And it's a game that like, I think would be really fun to have in the collection, but I do think it's a very difficult game to find. So yes, that was Hamster Roll. Very, very fun. Um, the following day, May 6th, I did go to my sister's house and we had a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. I believe this was our fourth campaign or third campaign. Um, we've been really enjoying that. I really love getting together with my family and doing that. Um, so we did have a good time with that. Unfortunately, I think that was the night that we didn't really do a lot of like combat. It was a lot of just like storytelling and getting more into the story, which I enjoyed, but it is really fun in D&D where you get to actually like fight monsters and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm excited to play some more of that. Um, the following day, which was May 7th, it was a Sunday? Yes, Sunday. I played a solo game and then that night Francis and I actually tried Haven, which Haven is a two player only Red Raven game by Ryan Lockett. Um, I actually don't think it is designed by Re Ryan Lockett. I think it's designed by Elf Siegert, I believe is his name, um, but Ryan Lockett does the illustration for it. But I was just about to actually get rid of this game. This was a game that I considered calling. It was actually in my calling pile. And I was like, you know what? I should probably try it before we actually get rid of it. And I am so happy that we tried it because I really, really enjoyed Haven. And it is now back on our shelves. Um, it is a two player only game, like I said. One person is the forest and one person is the city, I believe. And it's a little bit hard to explain, but you're playing out different cards um, in order to get majority um, for different tiles that you're going to gain. And if you gain that tile, you get to put a um, 
like a little icon for either side, whatever one you are, onto the board. And then there's a little bit of area majority there as well. So again, area majority type mechanisms happening this month. I actually played a lot of games this month that had mechanisms that I typically didn't go for and I actually really, really enjoyed, which makes me so happy. I'm like happy that I'm opening myself up to some mechanisms that I typically don't play um, and actually enjoying them. So yes, that was the Sunday we played Haven. And then moving on to that following Wednesday, which was May 10th, I went to the board game gals meetup that I go to every other Wednesday. And I played a lot of games this day. We decided to do some like lighter games. Sometimes I'm only in like one big game where we play a bunch of little games. But this day was, what was it? We sometimes have a theme for our days. And I think this one was, I think this one was just open. I think this one was themeless. It was a themeless board game day. But I played four different games. One, the first one that we played was Vegetable Stock, which is very, very similar to Point Salad, where basically there are cards out um, on your turn. You're just getting a card that has a bunch of different vegetables on it. And then everyone is going to draft a card. And then the card that is left on the table is actually the card that is going to influence the market, the vegetable market. So whatever ones are left, the market is going to go up and eventually the market will crash for those vegetables. And then at the end of the game, wherever the markets are, that is how many points you're going to get for all the vegetables in front of you. So you're kind of trying to gain vegetables, but then also make sure that the markets are going your way for the vegetables that you do have. I really enjoyed it. Um, I do think that I would prefer to play point salad over vegetable stock, but it was very cute. It was very enjoyable and I'm happy that I got to play it. And then next up we played Rajas of the Ganges, these dice charmers, which this is a game that I've been wanting to try for so long. I've never played the main game, Rajas of the Ganges, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I've never played that, but I've heard good things about that as well. And obviously me loving roll and writes, I needed to try the roll and write version, which is the Dice Charmers and Kat brought it. And I really enjoyed it. We played a three player game of it. And basically it is a basic roll and write where you are rolling dice and then you are drafting. Um, I think you get two die on your turn. I could be wrong. You might get only one, but um, you are just doing things with that die doing a bunch of different things. And it's kind of similar to Arc Nova, where the first person to get their two tracks to cross, which I believe there is a um, like wealth track, like a money track, as well as a popularity track or reputation track. And whenever that crosses, whoever um, does that triggers the end of the game. And then you calculate whoever has most crossed after everyone has had equal turns. So yes, unfortunately, I think I, I lost. I think Kat won. Um, but I really enjoyed it, and it's one, I don't think it has a solo variant. If it had a solo um, variant, there might be a fan-made one, possibly, but there isn't one actually in the game, so if there was one, I might consider adding it to the collection, but I feel like I have so, so many roll and rights that I don't need every single one of them. Um, but I did enjoy that one. It was very, very fun. Um, next up, we played Century Golem Edition, which I've always wanted to play a Century game. And the Century Golem, the art is absolutely gorgeous. It's similar in a way to Splendor, but you are actually playing cards down. And the cards that you're playing down, so I guess it's like, it's like Splendor, but with a little bit of like deck building to it, I guess, um, where you're playing down a card and that card's going to tell you some gems that you can pick up, certain colors. Um, some cards allow you to exchange certain color gems for other colored gems, things like that. And then your goal is to gain as much victory points by gathering correct gems in order to exchange them for victory point cards. So there's some cards that will be like 10 victory points if you exchange for three pink gems with the pink gems i believe are like the highest level um so it's this really nice effic efficiency puzzle where you are trying to upgrade your gems and get specific color gems in order to gain victory points super straightforward really really fun um, i enjoyed that one and i do think that it's a good like next step to splendor if you enjoy splendor then i think you would enjoy the sentry games and then lastly we played detective club which detective club is in the same kind of um, group as Mysterium and Dixit and Obscurio, games like that, where you have these abstract cards that you're using in different ways. In Detective Club, there is going to be someone that doesn't know the word. The active player is going to choose a card 
Um, they're actually going to choose two cards eventually, but they're going to choose a word that kind of they associate with those two cards. They're going to write that word on all um, like little booklets. Every player gets a little booklet. Um, they're going to write that word on every single booklet aside from one. So there's going to be one player that doesn't know what the word is and everyone's going to be playing cards out that kind of remind them of that word. Then they're going to play another card out that reminds them of that word as well. And then everyone has a chance to kind of explain why they chose those, those two cards. And obviously the one person that doesn't know kind of has to lie through their teeth and be like, yeah, this is what I chose and this is why. And then everyone has to vote for who they think is like the traitor or the liar um, in the detective club. It's very fun, really enjoyed that one. It would be one that I think I would like to have in the collection, maybe get rid of Obscurio possibly, or no, I don't think I'd ever get rid of Dixit. I think out of Dixit, Mysterium and Obscurio, I think Obscurio is the one that I enjoy the least, but then again, we haven't played it as much as the other two. so. Maybe I just need to give that one a chance again, but I really enjoyed a Detective Club and would love to have it in the collection. Um, but that is everything for the Board Game Gals Day. Um, I also played a bunch of solo games, one, two, three. And then that following May 13th, which was a Saturday, our friends Tom and Asha came over and we played two games that I've chatted about on the channel a few times already, so I'll quickly go over them. The first one that we played was It's a Wonderful World. I've talked your guys' ears off about It's a Wonderful World, but it is a fantastic engine builder um, with like card drafting. We absolutely love it. Um, Tom and Asha really enjoy that one as well. And then we also played a game of Arc Nova, which we've been meaning to teach our friends Tom and Asha Arc Nova, Arc Nova for a while. Um, I think we played Arc Nova for like a solid three or four hours. We did take a little pause in between to go make some espresso martinis and stuff like that, but it was very, very fun. I think Tom and Asha really, really enjoyed Arc Nova. Um, they were a little bit overwhelmed at the start because when you first learn Arc Nova, there's a lot of like decision space so i don't blame them blame them but yeah i think they enjoyed it and i have been obsessed with arc nova um, if you guys do not know arc nova is the monthly focus for the board game garden for the solo um, monthly focus so yeah i've been playing a lot of arc nova recently um, also because it's on bga now but yes those were the two games that we played on saturday with them um, that sunday i played a bunch of solo games um, more solo games, more solo games. Oh wow, I did not play anything between the 14th and the 21st. Huh, what was I doing that week? I might have been busy with like stuff. I don't know what happened there. Um, I might have forgot something in between there, possibly. Um, I'll put, if I did play anything between the 14th and the 21st, I might have forgot to put it on my BG stats, um, but I'll put them there if I did forget. Um, and then that following Tuesday was a streaming day and Francis did stream with me and we played Dale of Merchants, which this is a game that we received from one of the Board Game Garden community members. Huge, huge thank you to you. We really appreciate it. Um, Dale of Merchants has been on the shelf of opportunity for a while and I've been so excited to play it. Um, it is actually like a full on deck builder. We don't have any full on just deck building games in our collection. Francis and I actually went to a board game cafe and played Dominion a few years ago and we enjoyed it, but we didn't like love it. Um, but we've been searching for like just a deck builder. We have a bunch of games that have deck building in them, but we don't have really any games that are just solely deck building. So Dale of Merchants has really like hit that mark for us and is a game in our collection now that is just full on deck building. And we both really enjoyed it. We're excited to play that with hopefully his parents. I think we were meaning to play that the other night with his parents, but we didn't end up playing it. So um, we'll probably play that with them in the future because I think that they would enjoy it. It's a really straightforward, just deck building game where you um, have cards in your hand each turn that you can use in different ways. You can purchase more cards with them. You can play them down for their abilities. And then you're also playing them down into different stalls. And if you are the first person to create eight different market stalls, then you are the winner. So it kind of combines this deck building with a racing aspect, which we both really enjoyed. Um, so definitely go and check out that. Um, I think by the time this video goes up, I should have it over on the Board Game Garden TV, which if you guys do not know, I do have a second 
board game garden channel. It's called Board Game Garden TV. It's always linked down below if you want to go check it out. And basically it's just where I put all of the Twitch VODs. So all of the Twitch live streams I make into a video and then I put it here on YouTube so that they last forever because Twitch deletes live streams after like 30 days. So I figured I might as well bring them over here to YouTube so that they will last forever and you guys can watch them over there. So yes, that was the Tuesday. On Wednesday, we had another, or I had another board game gals meetup, and Steph actually came. Steph lives a little bit further away, um, and Kat and I usually go to the um, board game gals meetup, and Steph was able to join for this one. So we ended up playing my newest game in the collection. Actually, not my newest game, because I've gotten some games after that, but one of my newer games in the collection, a game that I've been wanting for a very, very long time, Dwellings of Eldervale, I actually ended up purchasing for myself for the Board Game Garden's one year anniversary, and it's up there, and I need to play it. I really wanna play it solo, um, but yes, Dwellings of Eldervale, I freaking love, and we played it, Kat, Steph, and I, and I enjoyed it very, very much. I think I lost, I think I might've got second, but, uh, I love Dwellings of Eldervale. I've already chatted about it. I think I chatted about it in last month's monthly overview, but I'm really happy that I was finally able to get a copy for myself and also just play it in general because I've been wanting to play it for a while. Also, I am hopefully at Gen Con going to be playing a game of Dwellings of Eldervale with Tim Chuin. So shout out to you, Tim. I'm so freaking excited to play Dwellings with you. Um, and I probably will lose epically, but it's okay as long as I get to play it. Um, but yes, we played Dwellings of Eldervale, really enjoyed that one. Um, I played a few other solo games. And then on that following Saturday, May 27th, I went over to my friend Donna's house. And this is kind of connected to the board game gals meetups that I've been going to. Donna is one of the coordinators of that. And then she's also started another get together of people that want to play some more heavy games. Um, the one on Wednesdays is usually for newer people to the hobby. Um, sometimes, you know, Kat and I like to play some heavier games along with Steph sometimes. Um, but most of the people there are there um, and they are new to the board game hobby and want to play some lighter games. And we're trying to like introduce them to heavier games and stuff like that and kind of get them more into the hobby, which I absolutely love Wednesday night get togethers, um, the board game gals get togethers. Um, but Donna started another one and we went over to her place to play some heavier games, which Technically the first one isn't super heavy, but I ended up playing Taverns of Tiefenthal. Um, Donna had this in her collection and wanted to get it off of her shelf of opportunity. And I always love to play Taverns, so I taught that. And Taverns is basically just you own your own tavern and you are um, rolling dice and the dice you're allowed to put in different spots in your tavern in order to um, like upgrade your tavern as well as um, serve your customers and different things. Um, and yes, I really enjoy Taverns of Tiefenthal. There is still, there's the like expansion that I really want to get for Taverns of Tiefenthal, but I can't find it anywhere here in North America. I don't think it's available in North America yet. Um, but if you do know where I can get the expansion, let me know. Um, but we also then played Tapestry, which Donna really wanted to play Tapestry. And again, I was more than willing to teach Tapestry because I've been obsessed with Tapestry and I've talked about it way too much here on the channel, but Tapestry is wonderful and you are just going up on different tracks and building up your civilization and the strategy and depth to that game I just love so so much so um, yeah played Tapestry and then I played some more solo games and then we make it to the last day of May. I forgot what month it was, which this was another board game gal meetup. Um, because it was the fifth Wednesday of a month, I think we always have an additional one if there is a fifth Wednesday of a month. But this was actually a throwback day. So the theme was throwback games. I personally don't have a lot of throwback games. I think the only one that I have is maybe Dutch Blitz. That's like the oldest and maybe like Scattergories probably that's probably the oldest too um oh also Catan but we probably couldn't play Catan that night um Catan goes for way too long there is one game that is definitely not a throwback game but I really wanted to play this one and Kat brought it but anyways the first game that we played was called Set this was a just small easy card game where basically you are putting out different cards that have different shapes 
and different colors and different amounts of shapes and stuff. And you have to be the first person to point out different sets, but the sets can only have one thing not in common and other two things in common. So they either have to be all the same color, all the same shape, all the same number of shapes or all the same shade. So there's ones that are just the outline, ones that are colored in and ones that are like striped. This one was really hard for me to wrap my head around like finding the different sets, but it was very fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, and then we also played Dutch Blitz, which I brought and we played a big eight player game of Dutch Blitz. I love Dutch Blitz so much. We actually just recently played it this past weekend, which will be in June. So we'll talk about it next month, but we played it eight players and that game gets so chaotic, but I love it so much. And it just makes my brain just think so much. And I just love the way that that makes me feel. And then lastly, we played a game called Potion Explosion, which I've played Potion Explosion a ton on Board Game Arena, but I've never played it physically. Kat brought this to the game night and I was like, yes, can we please play this? I love, love, love that game so much on BGA and the tactile part of it, taking out the marbles. I will say it's a little bit finicky um, with having to grab all the marbles. It's a lot easier when it comes to BGA. So I don't know if I would ever have it in my collection. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, and I do think that people in my life, like Francis's family, my family would really enjoy Potion Explosion. So maybe I'll get it because I don't think any of those people will play it on BGA with me. Um, maybe they would, but I really, really enjoyed it and maybe I will get it in my collection eventually. Um, but basically you're taking marbles out of this little mechanism and if you ever take marbles out and two of the same color marbles hit, then you get those as well. And it kind of chains. So you're trying to get as many marbles as possible. And then you're trying to get certain colored marbles to put into different potion bottles. Um, and then once you fill a potion bottle, you get that and use its special ability, things like that. And I really, really enjoyed it. All right, friends. So that is going to be everything for today's monthly wrap up. Hopefully you enjoyed hearing about all the games that I played in the month of May, which I do quickly want to give you guys my like top three of the month, which, so I think probably Moonrakers would be one. I think number two would be Haven, which I'm just choosing between ones that I've never played before. So these are like my top three new to me games for the month. Um, if I was not doing that, Dwellings of Eldereal would probably be in the top three as well. But um, yeah, Moonrakers, Haven, and then I think, Dale of Merchants. I think those would be my top three um, for new to me games that I played in the month of May. Definitely let me know down in the comments what your top three games were for the month of May. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed. Also hit that subscribe button if you've had yet to do so. Oh, we'd love to have you here in the garden. My brain is shutting off. Um, and yeah, I love you guys so, so much. Remember, you are somebody's reason to smile and I will see you guys in the next board game video. Bye friends.